Okay, this is the M1 paper from June 2024. It's question number six, and we have a statics question for the first part here. There's a constant speed, so there's no acceleration. And then later on, the uh, rope's going to be removed, so we'll have a dynamics part for uh, part B. Let's have a look at the information then and draw out our force diagram. So I said we've got a box of mass M lying on a rough horizontal plane. Box is pulled by a straight line by constant speed, uh, by a light rope. The rope's inclined at theta. Um, everything's as in the diagram. Coefficient of friction is going to be a third. Box is modeled as a particle. And then I'm jumping straight into this part here. It says that tan theta is equal to three quarters. So if you've seen any of my videos before, you'll notice that the first thing I do, just sort out what that means. If tan theta is equal to three quarters, we can draw a diagram of what that looks like. And if tan theta is equal to three quarters, that's opposite over adjacent for this right angle triangle, which means that the hypotenuse is five there. You can use Pythagoras or just learn the three, four, five triangle. Absolutely worthwhile you're doing that. But that then gives me that sine theta would be opposite over hypotenuse, three fifths, and cos theta would be adjacent over hypotenuse, four fifths. So, and go back and read the rest of the question now, having got that sorted out. So if we have this situation, what they're going to ask us to do is to find the tension in the rope. Okay, so if they're going to ask us to find the tension in the rope, let's draw out a force diagram then and see what we've got going on. So we've got our particle here, which is sitting on a plane. We have obviously the weight of the particle which is mg. When I, ever, I do these questions, I always do them in the same order. It's in contact with the plane, so there's a reaction force there, normal reaction. And then they told us that we had the rope pulling up with a tension here. And if this angle is equal to theta, what I want to know is how much of that tension is vertical and how much of that tension is horizontal. And it's no great difficulty to say that that's going to be t sine theta and that's going to be t cos theta. Have I got all my forces? Well, it told me that it was on a rough horizontal plane. So if it's on a rough, hor excuse me, a rough horizontal plane, there'll be friction. Friction will oppose motion. So in this particular one, friction is going to be going in that direction. And actually they did also tell me that mu was equal to a third. Okay, so it's a pretty classic diagram. What am I going to do if I want to work out tension? Let's tell you what I'm going to do and then I'll actually go ahead and do it. What I want to do is to have F equals MA in that direction. If I want to have F equals MA in that direction, I need to know what F is. I can't find F yet because F is mu R. If F is mu R, then I need to find R. So I need to go in this direction first of all. Not only is it those two forces, it'll also be the T sine theta, but we'll get to that in a second. But so what we're going to do is we're going to resolve vertically, first of all, to get R. Once I've got R, I'm going to do F equals mu R to get F. And once I've got F, I'll use the T cos theta and the F to work out what T is going to be, putting all those things together. OK, I've told you, but now let's tell the examiner. So resolve vertically. I think it's really important to label these things. A lot of students in my class go through the process, but they don't tell me what they're doing. And this is really useful in case you do make any mistakes. Resolving vertically then, what have I got? It's in equilibrium. There's constant uh, speed, no acceleration. So if it's in equilibrium, what I will have is that the two forces up are equal to the force down. So I'm going to write that down as R plus T sine theta is going to be equal to mg. We know that sine theta is three fifths from my previous work. So putting that in and also just tidying this up a little bit, I'm going to get r is equal to mg and then t sine theta is three fifths t. So I'll leave that as that. The whole point of doing that was so I could then get a representation for my friction. F is equal to mu r. So F is going to be equal to mu, which was a third, times R, which is mg minus three-fifths T there. And again, I'm not going to do any, any more than that at the moment. We'll tidy it all up in a second. 
And as I'd said uh, right at the start of the question, the whole point about doing that, whoops, was so that I can now resolve horizontally and F equals MA is now going to give me, going and looking horizontally, what have we got? We've just got that these two forces are in equilibrium because constant speed means no acceleration. No acceleration means that the forces are in equilibrium. Hopefully that makes sense to you. So in that case, F equals MA, there isn't an A, we're gonna get F equals T cos theta. Some teachers might say F minus T cos theta equals naught. No problem with that, but I'm gonna do it my way. So F, we've got that, that's a third MG minus three fifths T. That's equal to T cos theta, which is four fifths T. So all I now need to do is to rearrange this to get T equals, just take a little bit of time. This is mg over three. Um, a third of three fifths is gonna be one fifth. So minus a fifth T is equal to four fifths T. So take the T's over to one side and we're gonna get T equals mg over three. And if we go back and look, the question said, can we find T, the tension T, or they didn't say T, but the tension in terms of M and G. So. That part done, lovely. It says the rope is now removed and the box is placed at rest on the plane, okay. The box is then just projected horizontally with a speed of u. The box is again modeled as a particle. When it's moved a distance d along the plane, the speed of the box is half u. This is looking like a kinematics question, isn't it? Can we find d in terms of u and g? Yeah, absolutely we can. Let's just have a look and make sure again, I'll explain it to you guys. Um, what we're going to do before we do it. Well, let's go back to this diagram. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this diagram. I don't know whether I'd necessarily do this in the exam in terms of timing, but what they've said is, this is, this is my diagram, obviously, and they've said there's no tension there. There's no rope, sorry. So the tensions have gone, that's all gone, that's gone, that's gone, and we have that as my force diagram. So this is my force diagram now. Mu is still a third because the coefficient of friction doesn't change uh, between two, uh, the particle and the plane. So that's still a third, but there's no tension there. And what I'm going to need to do then is, I said it's a kinematics question, but what I need to do is to work out the acceleration this time. So if I want to work out the acceleration, the acceleration in effect, when, when this thing is fired off with a speed u there, friction will oppose the motion. So friction and acceleration will be going in that direction. We're gonna have a deceleration. It's gonna work out to be a deceleration and I wanna work out what that is. So we can use all the same information in terms of, um, I'm gonna do this really slowly, but you don't really need to do all this. If I resolve perpendicular, I'll get R equals mg. If I say F equals mu R, I'm going to get F is equal to a third mg again. And then if I resolve horizontally, this is the bit that I do now need to do to work out what the acceleration or rather the deceleration is going to be. Um, some students like to do this. And I wouldn't necessarily do that, but there's no force in that direction. So it's zero minus a third mg is going to be equal to mass times acceleration. I'm only putting that on as an explanation, really, but actually, if I was doing this then, we'd say F equals MA, it's gonna be minus a third MG equals mass times acceleration. The M's can cancel, so we're gonna get that our acceleration, or rather our deceleration, is gonna be A equals minus G over three. That makes complete sense, doesn't it? We push it off with the speed of U, it's on a rough surface, so it'll be slowing down, slowing down, slowing down. Eventually, it will come to um, a halt here. We're not going to have that scenario. What scenario are we going to have? Well, let's work it out. We've got our SUVAT. So what have we got going on with this particle now? Is they tell me, what information did they tell me previously? Let's just go back and have another look. Uh, where are we? So what they said was, it goes a distance d along the plane. Um, at that point, v is going to be a half u. We know it's set off with u there. 
We've worked out the acceleration is minus g over 3. So, yeah, we've got everything in place to be able to do this question. Sorry, let's just get to it. So what did we say? We said it goes a distance d. It was set off with the speed of u. At the point where it is at d, the speed is a half u. We've just done all that calculating to work out minus g over 3. I'm not interested in t in this question. I'm trying to work out what um, s is. And I've got U, V, and A. S, U, V, and A is going to be our kinematics equation. V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. Just need to put everything into this. Just be careful with this last bit. So a half U squared is going to be U squared plus 2 lots of minus G over 3 times D. And let's just go through and tidy that all up. U squared over 4 is U squared minus... 2g over 3d and if i want to rearrange that then 2gd over 3 is equal to u squared minus u squared over 4 so that's three quarters u squared let's tidy it all up in the same go i'm sure you can do this this is going to be 9u squared all over 8g as our representation for D. And that's it. That's all we needed to do was that second part. So interesting question there where we've got a little bit of statics and a little bit of dynamics in there. But hopefully that makes sense to you all.